Hello everybody and welcome back to the Okami walkthrough. We're in Kimiki Village, 100 years in the past. I am attempting to try and find the wonderfully hilarious bits of dialogue, but unfortunately it's not quite going to work out so well. If you go into any of the houses, uh, then the residents will beat you up, because uh, they're really not happy with you. If you go to Shakuya, I believe, then you'll get the hilarious bit of dialogue, but yeah, I, I, I missed that. I am ashamed of myself. But oh well, it's time to head to Shinshu Field 100 years ago. Now there is very little to do in Shinshu Field 100 years ago, other than head to the Moon Cave. But, that said, there are a whole bunch of new enemies that we're going to face here. And, essentially, because I want to make sure that my bestiary is complete, we are going to face down quite a few enemies. This is basically going to be mostly a battle part. And probably the most random battles that you will have seen in a single part of my Okami run, just because it's the way it rolls. So here are our final imp variant, the Clay Soldiers. So the Clay Soldiers in specifically are the uh, green ones, I believe the uh, guys with the swords are Clay Samurais. Basically, uh, I think for all of them, their floor finisher is a Veil of Mist, so that's really nice and lovely. And yeah, we're just going to absolutely obliterate them all. Now, uh, if I pop into the art book, we can see what there is to say about the clay soldiers. Or clay figure family, as they are referred to in here. So these guys are my favourite demons. They are so very cute, and I'm very proud of my work. It all started when Camille asked me to design a demon with an outer-worldly feel. I took the clay figurines from ancient Japan and gave them an outer space vibe. You can see the drama unfold before your eyes when you see these guys in the image scroll. They bow, do the wave, and other cute things. Because, uh, obviously you want cute when you're thinking of demons. Now the background of these guys is apparently in burial ceremonies of great figures. Human sacrifices are buried with the deceased person so that they will serve that person in the afterlife. These sacrifices are called martyrs. Sometimes martyrs also include human-sized clay figures. A clay figure was possessed by the spirit of human martyr soldier, and the resulting abomination is this demon. At least that's basically where the thing for the bestiary entry comes from. Now, I believe that this does have a basis in kind of Japanese culture, or at least Asian culture. And also, I suppose, all the way back to uh, general stuff to do with death, because that whole thing of putting clay figures of people in tombs goes back a very long time. I mean, probably the most famous example is the Terracotta Army, which is obviously the mausoleum of the first Qin Emperor. Um, so the armies of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. That's probably the most famous example of that. But the, uh, the clay figures that are being referred to, I believe, are the Haniwa. They're also the Dogu, but we'll deal with the Dogu in a minute. Or at least at some point, very soon. Uh, basically, uh, the Haniwa are terracotta clay figures which were made for ritual use and buried with the dead as funerary objects during the Kofun period, so 3rd to 6th centuries AD. So, I am certainly correct on the whole clay figures being buried with people. Uh, they were created according to the Wazumi technique in which mounds of coiled clay were built up to shape the figure layer by layer.
So they they were very important. The religious implications of the Hiniwa have largely declined in modern society, um, though the sculptures are still prized for their aesthetic and historical significance. Uh, but they have apparently, um, there's been the portrayal of living Haniwa since the late 1990s, and it's become quite widespread, um, being featured in trading cards, video games like Animal Crossing and Kirby, and also in television. In many of the depictions, the Haniwa is primarily presented as a ghost-like malevolent creature, without attempting to retain the historical aspect of the Haniwa's religious nature. Um, in Animal Crossing, it's the gyroids. So that's what they're based on. Though the original Haniwa, I think, are more humanoid in their design. But yes, we are just kind of making sure that we have got every single type of clay figure here because uh, we don't want to miss one. But basically, we are currently facing down a clay drummer. We have faced down a clay flyer, a clay soldier, a clay samurai. I haven't spotted whether we've faced down a clay shogun yet, but the clay shogun is the black imp variant. So, if you want the direct links, it clay soldier is green imp. Clay Samurai is Red Imp, Clay Drummer is Yellow Imp, Clay Flyer is Blue Imp, and Clay Shogun is Black Imp. Although, it's very, very clear what is what when you're actually just battling them. The other reason for all of this is, obviously, I can get a hell of a lot of Demon Fangs out of this, and, like, who the hell isn't going to want Demon Fangs? I want to get those final Holy Artifacts. They're not necessarily going to be hugely useful to me, but I still very much would like them. And seeing as that about wraps up all of that, let's actually talk about the designs for Nagi and Nami. So, uh, we'll start with uh, the disguise that we've got Nagi in right now. <laughs> um, so Nagi's design disguise is so terrible that it's hard to understand how anyone could mistake him for Nagi. But you have to remember that Amaterasu and the company are the ones that dressed him. So uh, they designed this look for him without knowing that he would look like this until the end. And that's the thing that makes it all the more hilarious, really. <laughs> uh, Nagi is Susana's ancestor and looks exactly like him, but is a little more impressive, obviously. Uh, so they gave him ancient style armour, used the same colours as used on Amaterasu to give him a holy feel. So the white and the red. Uh, they designed the hilt of the Tsukuyomi based on some moon crests. It is rumoured among the staff that it looks like the face of a burglar when held normally. And actually, now that they pull that out, it kind of does, because if you think about Hayazo with the, uh, the mask and also the bandit spider, it's that same crescent hood around the face. Uh, then Nami was designed to look like a priestess. Since she is to be a sacrifice, she's wearing something like a ceremonial cord. The eight purification sake is, sake is on her head. There are also two arrows, but I can't remember why I made it just two. Probably wasn't really thinking at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if I can actually... well, I doubt I'd be able to find out where the arrows come from. Maybe it's something specifically to do with uh, Izanami, which is where her name comes from, because Nagi and Nami are based on Izanagi and Izanami of Japanese Shinto legend. And I believe I have already gone over the story of Izanagi and Izanami in this playthrough, so I will not bore you with it again if I already have. I may decide to go over it 
again uh, at a later point. Just in case I haven't dealt with it. But yes, obviously, Izanagi and Izanami are a huge part of Shinto religion. And they are kind of, essentially, the creators of everything. And they gave birth to Amaterasu and Susano and Tsukuyomi and all of that. So they are they are so important. And that is obviously why they were used in the legend of 100 years ago. Because they originate the story of Okami. And I think that will pretty much do us for now. Bar getting like clovers and maybe a few dig spots in uh, Shinshu Field 100 years ago, there's very little else to do other than battle. So, well, I would certainly recommend just making sure that you pick things up. If you want to, just head straight for the Moon Cave, because that's really only where you need to go. Thankfully, they shrunk the place down so that it's not excessively large for you to travel across. Because otherwise that just would have been ridiculous. But yes, there we go. Time to head to the Moon Cave and uh, actually deal with things. If we have a look at our bestiary, I was just like, oh, okay, I probably should have gone through all of this just to make sure that I had everything because I want to find, you know, the, the clay soldiers to make sure I've got every single type of clay soldier. And then I'm just like, oh god, where are they? This is something that I wouldn't normally show off at this point in a game playthrough, but uh, why the hell not? It gives you a quick glimpse at uh, what the bestiary looks like. But here we go, so the clay soldier, the clay samurai, the clay drummer, the clay flyer, the clay shogun, and... Yes, they're all there, all five of them. So we're all good. I just wanted to make sure that I had this all because otherwise I would never have been able to forgive myself because I think on bar the Demon Gate Trials, this is the only place where you will ever face these enemies. So if you don't face them now, you can potentially miss them and oh that would have just driven me absolutely insane. Like I would not have been able to forgive myself. And this is something that I probably should have cut out, but oh well, these things happen. <laughs> We're at the Moon Cave entrance, we need to head forward now. Something that I've noticed, which is incredibly odd, is that we're facing down an enemy here. A very unique enemy that we really don't face anywhere else. I think we might face it one or two more times in the next dungeon, but that's about it. Um, but Dogu here actually does not appear at all in the art book. 
which is fascinating to me because it's probably one of the most culturally important enemies that we've faced. I mean, when we were in uh, the Suta Ruins, I brought up about the Dogu statues that we were climbing up and stuff, but now we're actually facing down actual Dogus, and they look almost identical to the, um, well, how they should look. Uh, so, seeing as we were facing them again now, uh, I'll bring up the Dogu, which means clay figures, are small humanoid and animal figurines made during the late Jomon period, so 14,000 to 400 BC of pre prehistoric Japan. Um, Dogu come exclusively from the Jomon period. Um, by the Yayao, Yai, Yayoi period, uh, which followed immediately afterwards, Dogu were no longer made. There are apparently various styles of Dogu, depending on exhumation area and time period. Um, according to the National Museum of Japanese History, the total number found throughout Japan is approximately 15,000. Um, Dogu made all across Japan except Okinawa. Um, although that said, most of them have been found in Eastern Japan, and it's very rare to find one in Western Japan. Their actual purpose remains unknown, and they definitely should not be confused with the clay Haniwa funerary objects. Um, some scholars have theorised that they acted as effigies of people uh, that manifested some kind of sympathetic magic, um, but we have no idea. And now... Hopefully, we'll be able to deal with things here, but I really do not like where the legend is going to go, because apparently, we die. Or at least, Shirinui dies, and here at the minute, Shirinui's not here, so we're Shirinui, and that means we're going to die. Even if we do defeat Orochi. But either way, we need to do this. We need to protect the world once again. So come on, Nagi. Get with the times. You can do this. We will save the world. Indeed we are. So let's go.